Praise God. Hello, my wonderful friends. Magus with you on a beautiful day in Asha. And today we're going to talk about the zodiac sign Gemini and the two becoming one. This is a story that was written in the stars long before it was ever put on paper. Gemini, the twins in Latin are known as Castor and Pollux. And for this teaching, I want you to think of the right and left hemispheres of the brain. And I want you to picture a ship. In mysticism, the word ship is the mind and our mind traverses life seas that can become quite stormy at times. I see this connection in all the different ancient religions and texts that I've studied. Look for instance at the story of Jonah in the Bible. He was running from God, the good mind, and he gets on a carnal ship mind. He's setting his own course and not following the higher mind. But then when he comes off of the ship and into the sea, then he's swallowed by the fish for what? Three days. And I want you to see that connection of three days. Three days uh, at winter solstice, the sun sits in the southern cross. Three days, the, uh, Christ in the tomb. Three days, the chrism sits in the hypothalamus. Three days, Paul was blind before enlightened. These stories are not to be taken literal. Uh, this uh, coming year, I want us to, as we're studying all these different, we're going to be studying the Bible, Egyptian mythology, Islam, Hinduism. Um, I don't want you to take it literally, because if you do, you miss the meaning. You misunderstand who God is. You'll misunderstand yourself and the world around you. For instance, it's like if I said, let's shoot the bull or let's shoot the breeze, meaning let's get together and talk. And you run out and buy a gun. And now you might say, well, that would be crazy. Well, let me tell you, my friend, the world religions are in the hands of the crazy ones. That's why you've seen all the atrocities and killings throughout history in the name of religion. It's time we shine a light on how to interpret these texts. Uh, there was a time that the so-called church and religious leaders would kill you for doing this, for just merely telling the truth, but no more. My friends, Jesus told his disciples to cast their net to the right side of the ship, go to the right hemisphere of the brain, and there you will find wisdom, higher consciousness, God. Now let's look closer at Castor and Pollux at the ship, the mind, the right and left hemisphere, the brain. Okay, Gemini is the third sign. Get this, in Acts 28, it paints a picture of the mind of Paul. It says, after three months, we departed in a ship whose sign was Castor and Pollux. Pollux, my God, and landing in Syracuse, we tarried there, get this, three days, and we fetched a compass, they got direction, and they found brethren and tarried seven days, the number of perfection, praise God. Let's take this even further, you know I love the ancient astrology, the ancient name for this constellation is Claustrum Hor, meaning the place of him who comes. From the claustrum comes the oil of life that travels down to the solar plexus, rises up to the Father's house. Chrism in Greek is Christ, the oil from above that comes into your body. When you crucify the flesh in meditation, the chrism is raised up to the seat of power in the right hemisphere of the brain, giving new life. In ancient times, Times, they knew that this gift uh, coming from the claustrum, uh, they were in such awe of it, they called it the Holy Colostrum, and then they called it the Holy Claus, then Saint Claus, and then finally Santa Claus. Santa Claus comes from the North Pole and comes down the chimney, your spine, with a gift. In the ancient zodiac, Gemini was male and female. Just as the chrism uh, flows to the male pineal and to the female pituitary gland, it's that milk and honey through meditation on the original word, the holy ohm, the two becoming one. Uh, you come out of that land of bondage the flesh to a land flowing with milk and honey and another identification of the con constellation Gemini is the figure of uh, at the right Apollo and the figure on the left is Hercules Apollo meaning ruler and Hercules to labor and then you will see the harp 
in between them, meaning harmony, where the left hemisphere and right hemisphere of the brain have come together, the two becoming one, bringing peace. Now the first decon that we come to is Lapis, the hare. And in this story it means the enemy. And I don't know how you can make a cute little rabbit the enemy, but nonetheless, that's what it is for this story. And the ancient astrologer Erotus said that below Orion's feet the hare is chased eternally. The son of righteousness, which is Orion, brings his foot down upon the enemy, but the hare is swift to flee. Meaning when the light of truth comes, the darkness flees. And then the, de the next decon is Canis Minor. And if you look at the brightest star in his belly, that is Procyon. And do you know what that means? It means Redeemer. And so for this next section here, I got Grandpa Whitey's Bible. I've talked about this in other videos and he always had this on him. So it's kind of a collector's item for me. It means something to me. And um, I'm going to read you out of Romans 7, starting at verse 15. And I couldn't memorize this. I have to read it and tell you the truth. I can barely read it. It is such a tongue twister. But the message in it is it could get lost and it's such an important message and I really want you guys to get this so please just stay with me through this part here it says for that which I do I allow not for what I would that do I not but what I hate that do I if then I do that which I would not I consent unto the law that it is good now then it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. So here he's saying um, he doesn't want to do air, do sin, uh, but he keeps doing it. And he he's saying that it's not him that does it, but it's the sin in him. And we've talked about this before. The, the real you, the I that is in there is created in the image of, of God is good. It's that divine spark, that fravashi, and it wants to do good. But then in your very genes and DNA, in your flesh, your animal body is passed down traits like anger and lust and fear and different things. And sometimes you're acting in those, and but you don't want to. But he's saying that's not him. That's not who he is. That's not his identity. And then he goes on to say, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. So he wants to do good, but he can't find out how to do good. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. So he's talking about the sin that lives in his flesh, that, that anger or that whatever you're dealing with that has been passed down from your parents and your grandparents that keeps coming up, that's in your very DNA, in your flesh. And so he's, he's asking, what can I do to free myself from this? Uh, he goes, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So he delights in the law of God with the inward man. Again, it's that fervashi, that divine spark. And then he says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? And then he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. He is fighting the lepus, the enemy, the evil thought, the lie, the illusion. And he's saying, who can save me? My friends, it's Procyon, the Redeemer. It's Jesus, the Christ mind, after that inward man, that divine spark, the Fervashi. To be absent from the body, the flesh is to be present with the Lord. This is meditation, raising that chrism to the seat of power where the two become one in harmony. Gemini, praise God. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Do me a favor, share these messages. Let's get this truth out and change the world back to Asha, God's original idea. And no, I love you. I love you. I love you.